when, uh, when I lived uh, in 1999, um, I was actually studying Chinese. And I can't talk myself, which was very hard. And I thought, I'm definitely not going to start another language. Chinese is too hard. I'm not going to learn Japanese. And I lived there to my great embarrassment for six months without even being able to speak one word. Mm. Um, I thought English is the scientific language. Why, why, should, why should I really put any effort in? Uh, but then I was awarded a Japan Society for Promotion of Science Fellowship. And part of it was implore foreigners like me to get engaged with the local culture. And because I've always been taken out, as you can imagine, in university settings to quite gorgeous dinners um, and not being able to um, say thank you, <laughs> I decided that I must learn a little bit of basic Japanese. So I went to the University of New South Wales Institute of Languages and did one of their sort of introductory courses. Channel you, white wave the tea, and I was very fortunate to meet um, in 1999 a, a group of quite wonderful people, wonderful Japanese people who are volunteers for overseas students. That they, in a sense, they're mainly female, but there are some male members, and they look after uh, a foreign research student. Um, now, I didn't, wasn't allocated one. I, growing up lad, you know, but um, people who, um, students that I knew, uh, had these um, volunteers, and so I met, met this particular group and got to know them and much admired what they did for foreign students, because we don't do that in Australia, we, we really don't look after our foreign students as well as we should, in my opinion, I mean, that's a, a comment about universities, where there's a very clear separation between you study and your life's your own business. Normally I use the um, subway in Tokyo, but my Japanese colleague said, oh, let's get a taxi to Tokyo Station, which fortunately we did, because as we arrived at the station, the earthquake struck, and um, uh, if I'd been on the subway, of course, I would have been stranded for, for several hours. And at the time, the news media in Japan didn't really cover as much detail because it was an unfolding disaster uh, with the tsunami wave. Um, and people that I know were killed in the tsunami wave. But I could not get back to Sendai. And so my clothes and university ID, they're still in an apartment in in Sendai. So I was very, very lucky in, in, in that sense to, um, to miss uh, being in, in Sendai. Uh, my working uh, colleague, he and I uh, set up a, a non-government organisation. It's, it, it's mainly senior engineers who want to help develop younger engineers on, on specific projects. And that group has put in a submission actually to Mitsui Bank for, for funding to help on the clean-up in um, the Tohoku region um, after the um, tsunami. There, there's still, my understanding, only 20% of all debris has been removed. There's still 80% that still needs treatment. And so that's one project. And if that gets funded, I'll volunteer to go back and, and help on that. was my ambition to, to travel. I actually worked, I've lived in many countries, I've worked in many countries. Um, uh, I've, I've lived in China, uh, I've lived in Taiwan, I've lived in America, I've lived in, in Canada, I've lived in the UK, um, uh, Philippines. But have, having said that great ease of moving in and out, for, for me personally, the way I feel, uh, Japan really is very special, because not only can I do that, because I, I have... Um, um, you know, an alien. I'm registered as an alien, as you like to call gaijins. <laughs> you 
yeah, look, it really is a very special place, and I would kind of like to think of it as, as a kind of second home. And uh, I've just, just got back from travelling, actually. I, I, I just got back from South America, and I was sort of thinking, do I want to go back? No. But do I want to go back to Japan? Oh, yes. Anytime, anytime.